Well, I think I've screwed up. Maybe a donut will fix it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. You might be wondering, what on earth am I doing with the BMW out again? We thought we'd finished that bike, and I thought I had. Honestly, I even posted a video that said the full build, but I'll change my mind. There is now a bunch of stuff I'm gonna to do to this bike just to finish it off. We're going to make it pop a little bit more. So we're gonna do the wheels. Uh, we're gonna go and pick up some paint and get the wheels done. We've got a new dash, or should I say, we've got the OEM dash fully fixed to go back in. We've got some more race buttons. We've got a bunch of stuff, including a dyno test as well. And all of that needs to happen as soon as possible. Before that can happen, I've actually got to move this beast out of my garage. Like this has been sitting here for two days since I got back from the first track ride on this beauty since I finished it. And let me tell you, it is an absolute weapon. I can't believe that it took me that long to actually get this thing on track. And I've literally fallen back in love with it. I, I don't know how I could actually find myself riding a BMW after cutting some hot laps on this. But let's wait and see because we are going to track test this bike anyway. So that's another thing, another video we are going to do shortly. So first up, I don't know if you remember, but the old screen on this bike was absolutely destroyed. So what we did is we sent that down to Sydney uh, down to a friend of ours down there who works on Beamers, and this is what he sent back. Look at that. Total, total transformation. So this one is better too, probably, because it actually keeps the original Ks. So when I go to sell this bike, it's not going to show 40-something thousand Ks. It's going to show 1,500-odd Ks. Much, much better, and it's got a race surround on it as well, which will protect it. So let's go ahead. We're going to take the whole front of the bike off again. We might try and do it just by taking the screen off if we can and replace the screen, replace the dash. So super easy to get the old dash off, just gotta take the screen off, then pull the dash out and unclip it from the back. Grab the new screen, single big clip in the back, and then just push the rods back into place where they should be. They fit pretty snug, and then it's got these great little metal clips which hold it in place. That does look better. That looks way better. The screen protector, it says S1000RR down the bottom there. You can see that just in there. Right, so here's the real test. Let's turn it on and see if everything works the way it should. Ooh, so far so good. Oh yeah. Well, the opening sequence looks good. 1552Ks, we've got, okay, so we've got some basic issues, but they're just, Faults, we should be able to clear them. Okay, I think we're onto a winner. I think we might have just made this bike worth even more money. So, the other good thing is that the dash that I had on it, I can now sell that on eBay for probably about $1,200 to $1,500 and quite literally get my money back. So, how good is that? And next up, we've got the Jet Prime Kill Switch. So this is gonna replace our ignition. Quite literally, a start stop button. You've all seen one, let's put it on. So first up, in order to get the start stop button on, I've gotta take this all off. So this has a little surround on it just here. And what I need to do is when I take this apart, this surround, which is the, um, that the key sits in, this is actually the, um, the immobilizer and it has the code reader in it. So this gets separated along with the key and we hide that down in the front. So I'm gonna actually probably to zip tie it up in there somewhere. Uh, and then there's two bolts holding this ignition on. So just one bolt underneath there and another bolt right there. Take those out and the ignition should just slide right off. Okay, before I do anything electrical, I'm actually gonna install one of these. I'll put one of these on pretty much every bike and it just means that Every time I want to charge the battery, I've got a little port, a port that I just zip tie just under here and you can just push the battery charger straight in. You don't have to take the seat unit and everything else off. We've 
We've got a special guest, Andy. Hey, Andy. He's back. Oh, my God. We've got Andy. In the garage. That's Andy's again. bike under that thing. It's a ghost. Yes, it's still there, Andy. It's just not fixed. <laughs> Um, so for anyone that's wondering, actually, yes, we've still got the RS660 project happening. We are just quite literally waiting on parts. But Andy's here because he has a special skill that most men don't have. What's that skill, Andy? Oh, there's a lot of them, to be honest. But Should we start with the one that's relevant? The one that's relevant is probably trying to design and 3D print some stuff to mount up some cool, get, some cool bits for this bad boy. So the problem we've got is the Jet Prime kill switch that we've got has no mount to go on. So with this Robbie Moto after aftermarket top triple and full triple clamp, we've quite literally got nowhere to mount it. So I'm thinking it's got like a little arm that comes out just here. Mm. So I'm happy with just a single mount. Like there is another mount. There is two. There's one just here. Yeah. But I would be happy with a single mount and maybe if we put some depth to it as well so that ideally the button sits sort of flush with with yep. this. So it's not like, see how the key is sitting way up here? The so the button would sit relatively flush. What do you reckon? I reckon we can make anything possible. Anything possible. Anything is possible. And he's a god. He's something. <laughs> he's a 3D printing god. Someone's got to be. And down sort of flush, down low like that. Yep. Maybe nice and flush, like, pretty much like that. But in position. But in position, yeah, that's like nice. that. So just block the dash. So yep, so right here. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cool. So we'll take some measurements and get it done. Booyah! Two colors and a neutral are basic design principles that I have not followed on this bike. I've actually got one color and two neutrals. I've got white and black, and then I've got red. But what I don't have is a second color. So what I was thinking is putting some color into the wheels to differentiate the wheels from the rest of the bike. Because if you look at the bike, you've got heaps of carbon, and you can't even see that it's carbon because when you come back here, it all just looks black because the wheels are black. Same on the back, you've got all this carbon, 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 and then a black forged wheel. So we've got to do something, and I've come up with a couple options. I went and saw our local art store, so our really cool place that just sells heaps and heaps of vinyl. And I picked up a bunch of uh, vinyl options. And then I also went to the paint store and selected out a couple of different colors. So I got this really, really nice deep voxel gold. And then I got this Audi Glacier White. So I thought what I could do is either do the whole wheel in one of those colors or one of each, which the more I think about it might be too much color, or I could do some form of stripes or decals on the wheel just to make them pop a bit because we've actually got elements of gold throughout the bike as well. So we've got gold here, we've got white here, we've got gold down on the inside of there got some gold here um, even the engine cover is a bronze sort of color we've got a gold chain so let's have a bit of a play and see what we can come up with so gloss white and gloss gold I think that's a perfect match I think I'll go more white and a touch of gold rather than more gold and a touch of white so I think let's start with something like wheel bands um, maybe we could clean up this edge with like a thin I don't know, gold pinstripe or something. Um, same thing in the front. Maybe we could put a pinstripe here. <sighs> yeah, just got to think outside the box. That is, even just with that little bit of white at the back there, so much better. That is actually remarkably easy to do. I don't know why I've been paying so much money to get this sort of stuff done. And I've got no air bubbles at all. So the secret is just patience. Lots and lots of patience. And then all I've done is I've just done a fine little bead around the edge, just so I can get that nice clean edge on the side of the wheel there. But that is cool. So what I might do now is like overlay a band of gold and just see how that looks. Now that looks better. 
very cool. Well, I think it's cool anyway. It's different. Everyone else just does solid colors. I thought why not have a bit of a play around. So I think what I'll do now is just underneath this black stripe, I'll put a little tiny, really, really, really thin gold stripe underneath it on both sides. And then we'll do the front wheel as well. And then that's probably enough. I don't want to overdo it. I think that looks a lot better. So just a little bit of white just in between the carbon, breaks up the carbon and just makes it pop a bit more off the wheel as well. And I think that's probably enough. I don't want to go any more than that. Okay, I'm much happier now with the way that this bike is looking, just with these little additions of gold. And one other thing that is now also going really well is I've got this. So this is what our man Andy has been creating overnight. And he's even recessed the nut into that. How good does that look? So we're gonna test fit it and see how it looks on the bike. Okay, so first up, let's just do a check and see if everything actually fits. So we'll push the wires in, if we can get it to go in. Here we go, feed them through. And this button should just neatly push in here. It's got a couple of, see these rubber, like, uh, I don't know, bungs or whatever they're called, gaskets. And that should just, just align that up like that. There we go. <laughs> Look at that, what a legend. I wish I was this good at engineering. Okay, she's all plugged in, got the key mounted. I've just got to hide it somewhere, so I'm gonna put it in behind the dash. So let's check it out. Push button. Yeah, boy, we got power. That's it, okay, great, awesome. So what I'm gonna do now is I might actually take this back off and then take the screen back off and then hide all of this trickery in behind that screen. Okay, so we're gonna start with a power run. Let's predict, so now let's put a donut on this and we'll put a donut on the actual final power figures as well. So there's two donuts up for grabs today. I reckon the first power run, no tuning, 189. Brett, what do you reckon? 194, 195. 190, let's go 194, 189. Let's see how she does. So it looks like it's cutting out as soon as we get to 8,000 revs. And that's probably because my cheap $25 eBay fix back in episode two has come back to haunt me. Um, so I've ordered a new camshaft sensor. I'm gonna take the bike home, attempt to fix it. Hopefully it's not even the sensor. Hopefully it's actually just like loose wiring or something for where the sensor goes in. Um, consume a few more donuts and see if I can then bring it back to the guru to actually dyno it. Okay, we're back home and now I've got to take the front back off the bike to try and investigate this problem, which I'm pretty sure is the connection to the cam sensor. Now I've ordered a new cam sensor just in case, hopefully we don't need it, but I've also got another weapon up my sleeve. It's something I purchased last week as a just in case for any future scenario. Allow me to show you. A spare loom. So I've now got a completely spare loom off the same year model bike. And I'm pretty sure the piece that I need 
is actually this one here. So if my one's broken and not connecting, then we could just actually transpose that onto this bike and then fingers crossed, maybe a couple of donuts later, hopefully the connection works. So let's give that a go. So just inside here, so this is a radiator, so just inside the radiator, up beside the fan, this is actually the plug in question. I'll see if I can get it with a bit of light on it, but two things, it looks like just there that it's actually been crushed. So it looks like the wires have been crushed. And then if I pull out and look at the end of it, I'll try and make sure it's nice and light. That plug itself looks really damaged. So I'm gonna see if I can fix that. I'm gonna see if I can find the right one on this loom, which I'm pretty sure it's gotta be up the top here somewhere. And it's not the one I thought it was. It's this one here. It's this one here. So this is the one. So I think what I need to do is pull this out and see if I can reuse this. Okay, so the two outer, there's three pins. The two outer pins have power. The inner one doesn't, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to. It could be the ground, I'm not sure. I think we're in business. I've just rescanned it using the GS911 tool and I'm getting absolutely no errors. And if you look at the plug that I cut off, it's missing the section on the end, which would have actually made contact with the um, with the sensor. Fingers crossed now I'll start the bike, see if I can get it warm and then run it past 8,000 and see if it cuts off. Okay, so just when I thought I'd fix it, I actually can't see the revs um, because of the errors on the screen, so it's gonna to have to go back to motor garage and I think we've done enough for this video, but at least I'm pretty sure we've fixed that issue. We've probably saved ourselves $399 on having to buy that sensor now that we've cleared that error for the cam sensor issue. So back to dyno, that'll be another episode. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, like, and subscribe.